Hi, I'm Kevin E.G. Perry from NME, and we're here um, backstage at Glastonbury with Labour's John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor. Um, um, so you're here at Glastonbury where yesterday we saw Jeremy Corbyn speak to one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen at Glastonbury, bigger even I think than Dolly Parton's. Uh, we've seen the most commonly heard song has been the old Jeremy Corbyn chant. I've seen more Jeremy Corbyn t-shirts than any individual band. People aren't just voting for Labour, are they? they've, they've really sort of embraced this campaign in a way that I've, I've really never seen for another political leader. What, what, what's your take on why that is? I'll, I'll remind Jeremy of the comparison with Dolly Parton. That will stay with me for years ahead. <laughs> Why do I think it is? I think, I think he's engaged with people in a way no politician has done for generations, really. Um, I kept saying to people, you know, only six or seven weeks ago, we were 24 points behind in the polls. And I said, look, and, and the newspapers, some newspapers were running a vitriolic campaign against Jeremy personally and against a number of us. And I said, if we could get to a general election where the law states that the broadcasting media have to give some balance in their reportage, if we can get that balance and people see Jeremy for what he is, honest, decent, principled person, and someone who's strong in his views about what he wants to do when he becomes Prime Minister, I said people, the polls will turn and people will engage, and that's exactly what happened. As soon as he went on TV and got that sort of coverage, then he started touring around the countries and around the country, and we noticed that audiences were huge, and it was all ages. But people who maybe not have been politically involved in the past, particularly young people, but also some older people, just wanted to come and listen to him. And what they heard, they liked. And what they liked as well is this: he's honest and decent. And he, he, what you see in Jeremy is what you get. He just these are what I, this is what I believe in. I want your support. If not, tell me what you disagree and let's have that discussion. And it just came across so fresh for people as well. Because usually you get all that spin and triangulation and people have had enough of it. Young people don't want that rubbish anymore. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the crowds are, are buoyant. You're obviously buoyant after the election results. But at the same time, Theresa May is still in government. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion really around about how long she's going to last, with, with, with the deal with the DUP is happening. Uh, what's your best guess about how long she's going to stick it out for? Look, we're not the largest party. I thought, I thought the polls would narrow and we could get a majority, a small majority. If we'd been, if the campaign had gone on another couple of weeks, I think we would have been there. Um, so I was disappointed that we weren't largest party at least. Um, she's clinging on to power. I never underestimate the ability of the Tories to cling on to power no matter what. And that's what they'll do. But the election could come at any time. Tories are ripping themselves apart. They're making a they're making a very crude calculation. Philip Hammond, Boris Johnson and others. How long do they leave her in position until they find a replacement they can all agree upon? The issue for us is that they can't agree upon a replacement. They're right, fighting like rats in a sack. And in the meantime, the... In, uh, the interests of the country are not being looked after, so the Brexit negotiations are not going well um, in terms of the economy, the, the rolling out the same old austerity policies, and our public services are in crisis. And the issue for us now is that we want, to, we want a general election as soon as possible, or we want them to stand to one side and let us form a minority Labour government, because we think the policies that we put forward in the manifesto, if we put forward those in Parliament, we think we'll have a majority for them. Because there's a lot of policies that even some Tory MPs will not want to be voting against. But it's a nightmare for us because you have a, a lame duck Prime Minister, a, a government party ripping themselves apart, and the country's interests well being going to the wall. Uh, you mentioned Brexit negotiations there. I mean, I was here last year um, speaking to people who were waking up at Glastonbury, um, devastated about the news um, of, of Brexit um, and, and shocked by the, you know, David Cameron's resignation. Um, how different would uh, the Brexit negotiations be if, if you were in government? Okay. We campaigned to remain as well. There's a lot of rubbish spoken about Jeremy not being committed, not campaigning hard enough during that referendum campaign. He did. I watched him tour all over the country, did hundreds of, you know, large number of meetings, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles to do that, and we lost. We have to accept we lost, respect the referendum, but we have to get the best deal we possibly can for our country. But also, we want a sort of collaborative new relationship with Europe. We want to be part of that new Europe that's being developed at the moment, even though we're not, we won't be in the EU. There's a real, I think there's a real chance of, to enable that to happen. It won't happen under the Tories, but it could happen under an, an, a Labour negotiated Brexit. And that's about protection of jobs and protecting the economy, establishing, making sure we have that collaborative relationship. That's feasible. 
But people, I'm talking to people here, particularly, people do feel uh, angry about how you know the whole exercise has been going on. They, you know, they feel they were lied to in the referendum by people like Boris Johnson and others. They feel they've been let down in these negotiations. So we keep on saying to the government, move over, we'll do it. And we've established, Jeremy's established a relationship with other European leaders, which is exactly the right tone, mutual respect and mutual interest. And on that basis, we can get a reasonable deal, we think, but then start having a discussion about how that new collaborative relationship with Europe can impact upon us all. Uh, speaking of anger, um, we've seen a lot of artists uh, over this weekend um, talking about Grenfell Tower, dedicating songs um, and uh, wearing sort of t-shirts supporting um, the cause of, of the Grenfell Tower survivors. Um, it's, it's, it's about more than Grenfell Tower, isn't it? It's about housing in this country being in crisis. Um, how, how can we change that? How, how will that change under a Labour government? We're all angry. We're all angry. We're, we're angry because we know the causes of that fire. You know, we know what, you know, the, the, the physical causes will, might have been a fridge that burst on fire, the cladding was wrong, or that will come out of the inquiry and all the rest. But I think we know roughly what those causes are. But the real causes are uh, decisions made by successive Tory governments in particular, who've basically refused to build homes in London in particular, and then housing then being used not for housing need but for speculative gain. And as a result of that, you get people crammed into unsafe tower blocks and as, as a result of that, people lose their lives. It's a scandal, absolute scandal. We, we've campaigned over the years for house building, council house building and investment in, in a housing programme. Jeremy and I have been campaigning on that for nearly 30 years. In addition to that, we've been campaigning for safety. We, we were both members, in fact, we set up the Fire Brigade Union Parliamentary Group. And as far back as like, uh, one speech I dug out was 2004, when I was calling for sprinklers um, as part of the safety mechanism. So what we've said, when we go back into government, first of all, we'll start building homes again. We've promised a million new homes, half of them will be council houses, and that will tackle some of the housing crisis that we've got. Secondly, we'll ensure that we invest in our public services, and that does mean making sure homes are safe. Last year, a Labour put up an amendment to legislation which is saying that landlords should have a legal responsibility to make sure their homes are fit for human habitation. That was voted down by Conservative MPs, 75 of whom were landlords. Absolute disgrace, really. So when we go back in power, build homes, make them safe. We're, we're backstage at the left field uh, stage now. Um, I've, you know, over the years seen people like Tony Benn speaking here. Um, and a lot of these ideas that have been spoken about um, at Glastonbury, maybe sometimes seemed like they were niche ideas. The, you know, the very idea of socialism has seemed niche. To see Jeremy speaking to such a loud, large crowd yesterday, um, to see your success, does it feel like some of these socialist ideas are, are going mainstream? I mean, you've obviously been. I think it's the new centre ground. I think we're the new centre ground. Um, they've gone mainstream in terms of the Labour Party. The general election showed they've gone mainstream in terms of 13 million people voting for them in terms of our manifesto. So I think we're the now middle, the middle ground. And what we've got, we're faced with the extremes on the right in particular of this Conservative government. So I think all we've been saying is people are recognising now is common sense. You know, it's common sense to have a real living way so people aren't dependent on benefits. It's common sense to build the homes that we need. It's common sense to make sure our public services are properly funded. It's common sense to make sure they're funded through a fair taxation system. So everything that we've been saying has been collecting support because people see it just as common sensical. But has it taken you back at all, though, after so many years of playing to you know, smaller crowds in places like this, to see it, to see it happen? Is it, are you surprised by it? Or? Ten years ago, I spoke from the pyramid stage on the issue of peace. I cleared that field in <laughs> ten seconds. People were running to get to the toilet or go for another pint or whatever it was. The difference is Jeremy held that crowd and they listened to him. They listened to him. And I was listening to people as they were coming away. They didn't just listen to him and sing, oh, Corbyn. They were coming away talking about the ideas. That's the difference. Um, as well as the music and the politics, I have to say, there is a, a bit of hedonism that goes on at Glastonbury. I'm interested to know... Um, <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, I'm interested to know how... how um, is it obviously in, in an issue of interest to young, uh, some, some younger people. Uh, would the Labour government uh, look to legalise drugs um, or decriminalise drugs? No, we, we've not said that. We've encouraged the debate to ensure that we have proper health services to support people who become addicted to drugs. We've encouraged the debate about tackling mental health issues, etc. But no, we've not had that, that debate or discussion. The issue for us now is 
To be honest, it's about young people giving us their ideas about the way they want to develop their future. Drugs has not been a big issue that young people have come up with us on. They've, they've been more interested in tuition fees and the debt, so that's why we're scrapping tuition fees. They've been more interested in, will I get the skills trained? They've been, you know, why don't I get the same financial support we used to have? So we want to bring back maintenance grants and the education maintenance allowance. Yeah, I, I find young people today are actually, you know, I know they get accused of hedonism and all the rest of it, and of course they want to enjoy themselves, but actually also they're more interested in about what, how you transform not just their lives but others. I don't, people underestimate the altruism that there is in young people and that we can build upon. Absolutely. And just finally, um, what's been your highlight of the uh, the festival this year? Other other than the main stage, oh, okay, okay. Actually, I did like Storms. I have to say, he was absolutely brilliant. And Alison Moyer, I thought that was fantastic. Um, the highlight, well, I have to say it, you know, it was Jeremy's speech. I think actually Jeremy's speech at the left field, where he spoke for about 45 minutes, completely unscripted, and he just spoke from the heart really well, that went down well. And he said, he covered such a vast array of issues, but he said things that, well, Tony Benn have said in the past and not been probably listened to, but people listened wrapped, wrapped in attention. And I thought it was uh, inspirational. People are listening now, it seems like there's a moment where people really crying out for them. Yeah, I think there's a window of opportunity now where people, are, they want to change, and they, but they want to influence that change themselves. This isn't passive politics of people just sitting there listening. This is people saying, I agree with that, but what about this? Let me go out there and do it. And what we saw in the general election campaign was a mass mobilization of people who the Tories thought could be disregarded. The Tories thought, young people, we can do what they want to them because they never vote. They did this time. Perfect. Thanks very much, John. Cheers. Cheers. Pleasure.